Hello guys, welcome to my tutorial on how to do uh, T1 in Underworld Speedplayer. Uh, this video will be a little bit different than what I used to do previously, which is like upload a video of me doing the run. And I wouldn't really be explaining anything, uh, and I feel like that is, that is actually quite important. So what I will do is I'll uh, I've recorded a run previously, and I'll just play that run in a media player, so I can pause it and explain stuff. Uh, while you guys are watching and I feel like that way it should be uh, obvious uh, what to do and what not to do. Uh, first of all I'll go over the weapon sets that I'll use. Uh, for the uh, for this build I have a, a flat bow that uh, is a requirement 9, has lifesteal and has been modified to do 20% extra damage and also has uh, plus 15% damage one enchantment mod on it. Then I also have a uh, defensive set which is just a shield uh, and a one handed enchantment weapon and I also have a longbow for pulling. For the build I use this build. I have two points in marksmanship and wilderness survival and I'll be using feel no pain uh, instead of heart of shadow that some people might be familiar with. And obviously there is winnowing as well over there. Uh, and you guys can see the template over here, I'll put it in the video descriptions so you guys can copy it. Then some additional info about the waste area is over here. Uh, the gear that I use is uh, six times Bliss Insignia, I have an expertise uh, headpiece. Uh, I also have a superior rune figure and then I also have three Vitae runes. Uh, for the quests I actually use a different headpiece, which is this one over here you can see. It's a, a marksmanship headpiece, when I'll be using this I will have 9 marksmanship, you can see I have 6 right now, and then with the gun set and the big guns will be at 9, so it will meet my uh, my bow that, that you can see over here, which is very important during the quest. So now I'll just uh, play the, the video and I'll explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Okay, so here's the video. I'll just fast forward a little bit uh, to the actual run start. Obviously over here you want to just do the, the waste pool, you aggro everything and then you run to waste. At this part you want to make sure you don't get stuck between anything because uh, you might die if you get stuck for too long. So usually I try to discharge to a smart crawler that's further away from me. So when you get here you want to uh, avoid something. I'll uh, post a few right here. Uh, the cold fires that you see over here, you don't want to aggro them, it's the patrol that goes circles over here. Uh, the reason you don't want to aggro them is because uh, uh, they don't pull very far uh, all the time. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But if they don't, they uh, get stuck at places uh, near the reaper and it will become really hard to, uh, to take a quest and it gets really messed up so you just want to avoid that. Then when you get here, I usually take out my longbow and then the uh, I will aggro the cold fires you see over there. And then you want to make sure that you don't get too far ahead of them so that they break. So just wait for like a split second until they get shot. Then when you get around here, you want to aggro all the smites. Oh, actually forgot something important. The smite crawlers that are over here, in this area, uh, on the minimap, you wanna make sure that they are not in range of the king. Uh, the king, uh, during the quest, will spawn like over here. So if a smite crawler is like somewhere over here, it's if you think it's too close, you just aggro them, and then you pull them to where I am right now, and then you proceed as normally. But in this particular run, they were really far, so they are not 
not likely to aggro onto the king. So uh, you want to make sure that you sidewalk because smite crawlers break when you move too fast. Uh, and then you want to wall block them. What I like to do is I like to not use whirling until I've got all my smites blocked. So you can see over here, I have them blocked fine, then I'll, I'll use whirling. And then you just stand here and watch them die. When the smites are almost dead, you can use winnowing if you want to speed up a little bit. It's not really needed, but I just like to do it. And also, uh, you want to save your uh, finish him for the last spike crawler, because uh, when there is, uh, how do you say, uh, he, he gets like healing a lot, and the deep wound also uh, reduces their healing. Uh, so I like to save it from the last one. Sometimes you can aggro the skeleton, but by this time all the smites, or almost all of the smites should be dead. Uh, so just aggro it and kill it. So what I like to do is I like to just run forward towards here and then when I get around this point I start walking sideways. The reason I do that is uh, because the cold fires are really weird when it comes to glitching. If you run uh, too fast forward, uh, I feel like they get stuck around this area uh, more often. And when I'm just walking sideways, I don't really get the, the glitches too, mu too much. So it's good to walk sideways from here on. So just aggro all the smites and the cold fires. You wanna avoid the skeleton. Uh, this guy over here is a skeleton. I usually just avoid it. If you want, it, you can aggro the cold fires over here. But it's kind of sketchy because when you do, you also uh, are very likely to aggro the skeleton. So I just avoid it. So you just keep moving sideways. Uh, when you get to this point, you want to make sure you don't get stuck between the cold fires and the and the wall. You just let them run to you a little bit, so you have all the room that you need to get forward. And then here you want to make sure you aggro the triggers, and then when you go to this spot where I am right now, uh, all the smart brothers will be glitched or wall blocked, and the cold fire will run in most of the time. When you've done killing all of them, you want to bowl the remaining trap riders on top of the cold fires. In this run, one of the trap riders was casting a lot of lava foam, so I had to wait a little bit. But once it started attacking you, you can keep bowling it up, and then you can use a uh, winnowing, and then you can jump in. This is the part where if you have Troubles using uh, doing this, you can switch to a cold shield because these cold fires do a lot of cold damage with a frozen burst, and a cold shield will really help you surviving their uh, their burst. As you can see, all the cold fires died almost at the same time. Uh, sometimes uh, you're a bit unlucky, and one or two or maybe three could survive your spike. Uh, when that happens, you can just use the Reaper to help you, and if even that is not enough, you can pop a, a Dream Rider. Uh, when you pop a Dream Rider, make sure you tell your team because uh, they might actually need a Summoning Stone. For example, the duos uh, need it, and if they can't use the Summoning Stone, then they could get fucked over pretty bad. So only do it uh, if you have to, and if you do, make sure your duos know it. So that uh, they can uh, wait with their quest, or maybe I'll just want to do it if the tier 3 gets 
uh, is really comfortable doing it. Uh, but just make sure you say it. Okay, so if you're kind of new to this or you find this part really hard, uh, this is a good time to make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Uh, I also like to pop a slice of pumpkin pie, uh, renew my alcohol and also pop a water supply. The reason I use a pumpkin pie is that it makes you attack uh, slightly faster, uh, which is actually pretty important uh, in order to kill the skeletons in time, because the timing is pretty tight. Um, so yeah. Also, you can renew your winnowing if it's about to run out, uh, but just put it down if you are if you have the time and you just want to play it safe. Also, what's really important is that uh, in this part you need a marksmanship headpiece. Uh, obviously, you can't use a marksman headpiece and an expertise headpiece at the same time. So, whenever you use your whirling, make sure that you use your expertise headpiece. What I like to do is I like to use whirling before the, right before the quest start and then switch to my armor shake headpiece. As you can see right here. Then you want to take out your longbow, start the quest and then run up to the wall over here or the cliff or whatever you want to call it, bow rider, and then DC in. And then you want to switch to the flatbow uh, to do uh, the most damage to the skeleton, just attack it. The first rider will spawn over here. It's a white rider. Uh, you're, you should be in range to just attack it. So I just attack it once so it aggroes onto you and then uh, switch to the skeleton again. When its skeleton is below 50% health, you should finish him. And then when it dies, uh, you can DC to the second skeleton. Okay, so what I forgot is that there is actually a drider over here. I forgot to aggro it, uh, but one yellow drider is not really a big deal. Uh, just make sure that you don't let food too much. Uh, they always spawn at the same time at the same place, so it should be actually fairly easy to just bow everything in time. Now when the skeleton is dead you wanna just walk towards the center. Don't run because the skeleton might break so I always like to just sidestep and walk backwards throughout the whole quest. And then when you feel like you have enough health you can kill the third and last skeleton. And then from this point on it's actually fairly easy. All you have to do is kill the white fighters. Wait until everything is spawned and then you can move to do the, the waste pool. When you get to the waste pool I always like to kill the, the skeleton and the smites. You don't really have to but they could drop back those so I just do it anyways. At this part you don't really have to wait until the smites are dead uh, in order to move on uh, because they are melee so they will always be right on top of you and they will just keep taking damage even if you're moving. So as you can see I'm just moving towards the cold fires. Since it's just 3 smite rollers I don't really mind getting smite hex because it's not a lot of damage when there's such few smites and it should be perfectly safe. When these cold fires are dead you can move on to the second group. So you just kill them with whirling. And if you want you can put down winnowing uh, right before they die. And then when they die you can DC into the, the driders in order to finish the quest.
I'm not actually doing it this particular run, I don't really know why I didn't. Well, it's not really important anyways. Okay, so you see the quest is updated. Um, sometimes it doesn't update by itself. When it does, all you have to do is walk into a radar range of the king. And as soon as it's in radar range, uh, the quest should update if it hasn't already. Well, this was it. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, I plan to do more videos like this where I just...